European Journal is provided to the Nebraska ETV Network by members of Nebraskans for Public Television. From Cologne, West Germany, this is European Journal, brought to you in part by a grant from Lufthansa, German Airlines. Today on European Journal, West Germany faces a mounting waste disposal problem, a Spanish automaker is on the road to recovery, and a castle for rent for your next party. With your hosts, Jeannie Hingson and Neil Lundy. Hello and welcome to European Journal. Today we'll also look at West Germany's new astronaut trainees and Germany has discovered America's pastime, baseball. But first to a historic east-west journey. The communist East German leader, Eric Honecker, will soon be paying a five-day working visit to West Germany. Many Western observers view the visit not only as an indication of improved ties between the two Germanys, but also a growing willingness by Moscow to open the way for better relations with Bonn. As officials on both sides are preparing for the historic visit, Michael Riedner took a look at what results the Germans in the East and West expect. At the beginning of September, Erich Honecker will become the first East German head of state ever to pay an official visit to West Germany. Up until now, West German leaders have traveled to East Germany, but they have never paid official visits to East Berlin, which the communists have designated as the capital of their state. The last official visit to East Germany was made by former West German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt six years ago. The current Chancellor Helmut Kohl met with Honecker at the funeral of Soviet leader Yuri Andropov in 1984. In the same year, Kohl extended an official invitation to Honecker to visit West Germany. But Moscow forced the East German leader to cancel the trip just three days before it was to take place. Now that Honecker has finally received a go-ahead from Moscow, East Germany citizens explain what they hope will come of the visit. The most important thing is stability and freedom in Europe. That's the decisive question. I expect better inter-German relations. Personally, I hope more young people will be able to travel to West Germany. I've got friends over there I'd like to visit. Back in 1970, former West German Chancellor Willy Brandt laid the groundwork for fewer travel restrictions between the two German states. In recent years, more and more East Germans have been permitted to travel to the West. West German officials estimate two million of them will be allowed to visit West Germany next year. That works out to nearly one-eighth of the entire population of East Germany. Many of them will be young people. Agreements on environmental protection along the German-German border are also expected to result from the upcoming visit, along with accords on scientific cooperation and nuclear reactor safety. Officials on both sides stress that no topics will be discussed that would in any way alter the position of East Germany within the Warsaw Pact or West Germany within NATO. We will follow the guideline which has been agreed upon by the Alliance and there will be no special relations concerning disarmament, for example. But the topic will definitely be discussed, and I think even that is important too. Not all of Honecker's trip to West Germany will be devoted to official business. The East German leader also plans to visit his hometown, not far from the French border, which he left more than 50 years ago. As a young man, Honecker was a drummer in the local communist marching band before it was disbanded by the Nazis. Later, he was arrested by the Gestapo and imprisoned for 10 years. For generations, the town's chief industry was coal mining. But 20 years ago, the mines were shut down. As a result, unemployment in the area is relatively high, as is membership in the local Communist Party, of which Honecker's sister is still a member today. She still lives in the house in which Honecker himself grew up, and it is here that he will visit her. For years, she has refused to talk to journalists, and Honecker has requested that the media be kept away during his visit to his hometown. Meanwhile, in Bonn, as politicians prepare for the official part of Honecker's trip, 
They caution Germans on both sides against expecting too much from the historic visit. Michael Reedner, European Journal. As the Honecker visit draws comments from citizens to government officials, Western observers have also expressed their views. The New York Times correspondent in Paris, Flora Lewis, spoke with Michael Reedner about how the visit will affect relations between the two Germanys and the Western Alliance. It's in everybody's interest, including uh, the other Western allies besides, East, besides West Germany. Uh, that the situation there should be as uh, unstrained and, and normal every day as possible. You can't really be normal with a wall there. Um, but you can have less shooting, that's already something. What, in your opinion, is the primary reason West Germany goes out of its way and pays a lot of money in the process to increase contacts between the two German states? That's a very interesting question that really can't be answered. Uh, I've, come, I've tried to add up all the different ways that West Germany provides money to East Germany in forms of subsidies, really. My guess is it's something between five and ten billion dollars a year. Now, when you consider that the population of East Germany is 17 million, that is an enormous amount. And what is the purpose? Well, that it is to keep open this sense of an undefined, unsettled uh, future. Uh, and it is a sense, it is an attempt to say whatever the regime in East Germany, the people are fellow Germans and we must do what we can to help them so long as we can't do anything to change their way of life. Several French officials have expressed concern that a reduction of U.S. nuclear commitment here in Europe might lead West Germany to seek reunification with East Germany or at least neutrality. How seriously would you take those concerns? Well, I would say, first of all, uh, that when you speak to the Soviets, to Soviet officials, it becomes very clear, no way. Even East Germans now recognize very clearly that a reunified Germany would certainly not be communist. And when you speak to Soviets, it's clear that even if it were communist, the Soviet Union would be very uncomfortable with it. So I think there's no chance. As long as Germany remains divided, the Bonn government will continue to spend considerable sums to keep road, rail, and telecommunications links between the two states open. Other financial arrangements include West German guarantees for East German government loans. It sounds like a good deal, buying a large slice of a car manufacturer for the nominal sum of one peseta. But when the company has debts of around $3 billion, is overstaffed, and has obsolete plants, then it's not so much of a bargain. The company in question is Seat, the Spanish automaker, which is now under West German control after trying a joint venture with an Italian firm. Rex Ellis reports on the company's prospects under new management. Seat symbolizes Spain's newfound industrial growth. The Spanish automaker is slowly getting on its feet after years of heavy losses. But it still has a long way to go to improve outmoded production methods. The pressing plants are only partly automated and need too many workers and they have had hardly any maintenance in the past five years. Keeping up production was more important. But robots have been installed in some sections of the plant as part of a $4 billion modernization program. This money is being invested by the West German car company, Volkswagen. It bought into Seat in 1981, taking over the holding of the Italian firm Fiat, and now holds 75% of Seat's shares. Volkswagen has actually been running Seat fully for a year, and in talks with Spanish government ministers, company officials report that losses have been slashed by 30%. Very much that we are going in the right direction. All we have to do is to go a little faster in many areas. One area is building on the success of Seat's Ibiza model by improving it. The Ibiza is Spain's most popular car and sells well elsewhere in Europe, particularly France and Italy, where the market for smaller cars is large. Seat's overall exports have increased by 30% in the past year. But to get Seat out of the red, productivity must improve. That means cutting the workforce. 6,500 employees must lose their jobs, but only 2,000 have so far accepted the company's redundancy offer. Layoffs are just one aspect of a 200-point plan to modernize the car company. Recently issued figures show the plan is already succeeding.
car deliveries in the first quarter of this year were up by 47 percent over the same period last year. Much of this success is due to the popularity of the Ibiza, as its sales grow faster than any other European model. But Seat is still losing about $200 million a year. To reduce this deficit, the company needs to produce 400,000 cars a year and sell them in a highly competitive European market where several other companies are fighting for survival. Seat's development in the near future will be an indicator for Spain's overall industrial prosperity. Rex Ellis for European Journal. Well, America continues to pick up the pieces of its space program in the aftermath of Challenger, Europeans are gearing up for future shuttle missions. Once NASA resumes manned space flights, at least five new West German astronauts will be waiting for a ride. Peter Morello reports that on this side of the Atlantic, there is growing enthusiasm for both America's and Western Europe's space goals. It could have been a scene from the early glory days of America's space program. A nation beckons a few of its brightest and bravest citizens to reach for the stars. This time, it's West Germany. Of 1,500 applicants, three men and two women were chosen by the West German government to become astronaut trainees. Despite continued delays with the U.S. space shuttle program, West German astronauts are convinced they'll all get their chance to fly. The question is when. Challenger, go with throttle up. The Challenger explosion still echoes throughout Europe. With West Germany closely linked to America's space program, officials here are now reviewing their options. West Germany is putting its eggs in more than one basket. By participating in both American and European shuttle programs, Bonn hopes to give its astronauts as many flight opportunities as possible. The West German government is now committed to the French-led shuttle project, but Hermes will probably not be in orbit for at least 10 years. Until then, German astronauts will rely on the U.S. shuttle, but they're still waiting for NASA to schedule Germany's second space lab flight. We obviously are looking first for the D2 mission, but uh, this is not the only mission which will come in future. So even if only one or two of us will fly, we have a real chance to fly. And obviously that's not the case uh, with respect to NASA. Following the highly successful D-1 mission, Western Europeans got bogged down in negotiations with NASA over the use of a joint space station. While officials haggle over the management of a station planned for the mid-90s, West German astronauts are gearing up for more shuttle flights. West German leaders, citing the enthusiasm of their astronauts, believe remaining questions will be resolved. We're talking about the free use of the results of research and technology development. Um, the basis for such peaceful uh, cooperation is indispensable. And I feel that we find a good uh, basis in uh, the agreements which we are negotiating just now. Within a few months, West Germany's new astronauts will begin their three-year training for space flight. But as far as they're concerned, their journey to reach the stars has already begun. Peter Morello, European Journal, Bonn. Everybody produces it, gets rid of it, and nobody wants it. Garbage. West Germany is facing a mountain of waste disposal problems that is getting worse. The Germans burn, dump, export, and recycle their garbage, but each disposal method spawns other dilemmas. As Abby Tobin reports, the West Germans are dealing with an insoluble problem. Each year, every man, woman, and child in West Germany produces more than one half ton of trash. Altogether, that's enough to fill a football field five miles high. West German cities are hard-pressed to find places to put it all. Dumps like this one are filling up so fast that the West German city of Cologne will be looking for a new site within five years. With neighborhood opposition, getting a license for a new dump in West Germany can take up to ten years, as long as certifying a nuclear power plant in the U.S. Strict environmental laws forbid the reuse of old dumps for housing or agriculture. In Germany, we are highly pop uh, populated and uh, there's a high degree of industrialization in our country. And it becomes more difficult to find new sites, uh, maybe for uh, disposal of waste, but also for incineration of waste. The Environmental Green Party is pushing for waste reduction as a way out of the country's mounting garbage crisis. Our first point is to avoid the production of garbage. The second point is to recycle the garbage. And the third point is to incinerate the garbage without damaging the environment as much as possible. Then, 
West Germany is already one of the world's leaders in recycling. Almost half of all paper and one-third of all glass is recycled. But industry has blocked the use of refillable bottles. They have dropped from over 90% of the market to 75%. There is no official recycling of aluminum cans. While the U.S. burns more of its garbage, there is growing concern on both sides of the Atlantic that dioxins and toxic ash make the cure worse than the disease. The West German Greens say building expensive incinerators locks a nation into producing more waste when it should be cutting back. In the search for new dumps, West Germany even exports its garbage. To some extent, household waste or garbage, which goes, uh, for instance, to France or to a high degree from the city of Hamburg to East Germany, uh, but also some type of uh, special or hazardous waste uh, goes across the borders. As many as 200 trucks a day cross the border and dump Western garbage in communist East Germany. East Germany has fewer regulations concerning dangerous wastes, and there is little public dissent. East Germany earns $25 million in hard currency for its services. But the four miles between Lübeck, West Germany, and the Schonberg toxic dump in the east aren't enough to calm West German fears of water and air pollution. If that wasn't enough, nuclear waste is also piling up. There are no permanent disposal sites for high or low-level nuclear waste in West Germany. Radioactive waste is currently stored above ground. Officials plan to put it underground, but sites won't be ready until the year 2000. While trash reflects society's wealth, officials agree its health depends on waste reduction. Abby Taubin for European Journal. For many, anthroposophy is a way of life. It deals with one's inner space and the outer space and how the two should coexist in harmony. Holly Jean Rollins went to Switzerland to find out what anthroposophy is and where it began. The Goethe Annam was designed by Rudolf Steiner, the founder of Anthroposophy. The building is considered by many to be an architectural marvel, but to others it's an eyesore, a cross between a bunker and a cathedral. It was named after the German writer Goethe, whose works are greatly admired by the anthroposophists, 800 of whom worked in Dornach. Anthroposophy means wisdom of the human being, and within the walls of the Goethe Annam, wisdom is exchanged in the schools of science, astronomy, mathematics, medicine, speech, and music. Anthroposophists believe that the wisdom gathered here opens the door to a unique way of life as written down by Steiner on thousands and thousands of pages. But his philosophical works are difficult and outsiders have a hard time understanding what anthroposophy really is. Virginia Cease, an American anthroposophist, sums it up. What is anthroposophy? Anthroposophy really helps the human being to not only discover himself in his own inner nature, in his thinking, in his feeling life, and in his impulses of will. But it also helps the human being to discover the world of nature in a deeper sense, and also to find that we live embedded within a spiritual world. The anthroposophical way of life includes research in biodynamic agriculture, which has also helped many farmers. In the renowned Waldorf schools, there are 80 throughout the world, the students receive a liberal education without the fear of having to achieve high marks. Art and movement is an important aspect of their schooling. The Lucas Clinic is internationally known for its treatment of cancer. Art therapy is a part of the treatment as well as Iskador, a mistletoe preparation discovered by the anthroposophists and used by thousands of cancer patients around the globe. Anthroposophical interior decoration is known for its fine structures. The most important aspect of their architecture is that the forms become living gestures. The furnace of the Goethe Annam was built to resemble rising smoke. This was once the home of a sculptor, but Donald Fullen lives here now and he teaches Eurythmy at the Goethe Annam. This is a form of movement, a form of art which is performed and taught here. And it strives to transform the human body into an organism of speech, of silent speech. We have gestures which correspond to the sounds of speech. For example, B, M, and S.
Anthroposophy, it's a way of life, and to life belongs food. For instance, the kind served in the Goethe Annam's coffee house and restaurant. Although many anthroposophists are vegetarians, consuming meat is not a no-no. More important is having a well-balanced diet with lots of natural foods, proteins, and vitamins. But I've decided today to have a vegetarian meal. Anthroposophic food for the body, the mind, and the soul. Holly Jane Rollins in Dornach, Switzerland, for European Journal. Keeping a roof over your head is expensive if you own a castle. The upkeep for European castles runs into thousands of dollars. One West German couple found a solution to their rising maintenance costs by renting. Barbara Vonderheit takes a look at the practical aspects and care and upkeep of a castle. Living in a castle today isn't all it's cracked up to be. They're drafty. The roof is always leaking in one place or another. The wiring and the electricity are always on the fritz. And above all, it's expensive. That's what prompted one young couple to transform the family castle into the site for a medieval festival each year. Recently for the seventh extravaganza, Count Franz Josef Beisel von Gimnich and his American wife Jeanette staged the festivals. They're partly to keep alive the traditions, arts, and sporting forms of 600 years ago when the castle was built, and partly to help pay for fixing its leaky roof. The festival takes you back to the time when royalty ruled, when grievances were settled with a civilized sword fight, when ladies wore wimples and knights wore mail, and drumbeat rolled from the camps through the hills. The groups that take part in the festival are history buffs whose costumes and camps bear authentic detail. Aside from the fun, attracting viewers who pay an entrance fee of about $6 is the name of the game for the Count and Countess. It costs them about $125,000 to stage the events each year. They arrange the huge festival and take part in it too. The lady of the house helps run the festival's business and awards prizes to victorious jousters. All that to keep up the castle. Do you feel like you married a castle as much as a man? Certainly do. Yes, I do. I married a castle, then I married a family, and somewhere there's a husband, I think. <laughs> the couple offers wandering troubadours and medieval craftsmen, too. Charming as it all is, the festival produced huge losses at first. So the enterprising couple began to stage private parties here, too. A kind of rent-a-castle party. My wife and we were married three years ago, and we had a party in middle-aged costumes. We had invited all our friends, and it was a big, big hit. And uh, so I said, why we don't arrange those kind of things for private people from other countries or from Germany or so on? At a dinner costing some 40 to $60 per person, Medieval musicians and jesters will entertain guests. Never mind that some nobility sniffs that putting the family crest on take-home bibs is tacky. Most of the guests love it. And even if the entertainment stretches a purist notion of medieval merriment, it's obviously a hit. There's a steady stream of visitors coming to the castle now for corporate management programs, birthday bashes, and even wedding parties. The celebrations promise to enthuse the guests. These parties offer something unique, the dazzling allure of a bit of royalty for rent. Barbara von der Heidt, European Journal, from the castle at Satzwei, West Germany. The Japanese stole baseball from America, and the game turned out to be a big hit. Now, the Europeans are in the dugout as baseball is quickly catching on. Jerry Huffman reports on baseball the German way as fans are getting ready for this year's version of the European World Series. America's national pastime is becoming one of Europe's newest fads. Baseball's popularity is moving faster on the continent than a Dwight Gooden fastball. The number of teams in Germany alone has more than quadrupled in the last two years. Part of the credit goes to baseball's best ambassadors, its young people. This high school all-star squad is spending the summer playing and coaching Europeans. Here, uh, you don't see it on TV. You rarely hear anything about baseball. I mean, the sport number one here is, uh, number one sport here is, of course, soccer. Uh, the thing about the, the, the players themselves, it's hard to get them to, uh, to think baseball. I mean, baseball is a sport where it's maybe 50% physical and 50% uh, mental. All right, give me one, give me one, go to first. 
As you might expect, baseball the German way has a few unique twists, but all the essential parts are still there. It takes a handful of people, a bat, a ball, and a sense of humor. When you play baseball Bunt. at a horse show ground, you okay. really learn what it means to dive for a ball. Bunt. Bunt. That's a water obstacle. It's really not too tough for a horse out here, but if you want to play outfield in Germany, it's a good idea to learn how to swim. It's enough to give even Casey Stengel an ulcer. The Cologne Dodgers had their hands full against the American team, but in the end, the Germans came away a little wiser and ready for another game. Baseball is a very interesting uh, game. It's a fast game, and uh, you have a lot of thinking about it. And some, normally it's not, I think it's not normal in Germany to play baseball. What I'm really excited about is I've been coming over here for six years now, and the Swiss, and especially the Germans here, are really making a lot of improvement. Uh, as far as the, the level, it's, they're, you know, about an average high school team. A final thought. While the game is catching on, it would be safe to say almost any major league star could walk down the street and not worry about hordes of autograph hunters. To be honest, they better pack their PR agents. Do you have a favorite player in the States? Uh, yeah, Martin, uh, Mike Gooden or is a pitcher from... Dwight Gooden. Dwight Gooden, yeah. I like him very much. Baseball has become so popular in Germany, Cologne has been chosen as the site for this year's European World Series. Jerry Huffman, European Journal, Cologne. All they need now is some popcorn and some nice ice-cold beer. And some red hots. <laughs> okay, before we leave you this week, we are going to go back to that beautiful castle. But first, Neil, a look at next week's show. Well, Jeannie, next week on the program, we're going to look at the problem of the fluctuating dollar and the havoc it's causing with European trade. And there's been a number of bad accidents involving trucks, which has prompted authorities to examine safety standards. And we'll go to the canals of Venice and do a story on the dying art of gondolier making. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. The preceding program was made possible in part by a grant from Lufthansa German Airlines. Transcript of this program send two dollars to this address. European Journal is provided to the Nebraska ETV network by members of Nebraskans for Public Television.